Hello, about a month ago I tested out this flat Express LRS antenna and receiver from uh, Beta FPV and I put it in this what, the bone drone. You can just kind of see it there and it's literally got no antenna in. And it didn't perform very well. We got into fail-safe situations less than 100 meters going in front of myself. Um, amount of it probably blocking from the carbon but uh, other people tested it and got similar poor results and found it was fail safing before the DBM RSSI value dropped as low as it should do. So Beat FPV sort of put out an apology about this and said you could get your money back if you'd bought one or you could get a replacement because they were going to look at it again. And look at it again they did and they've re-released it. And I've got one here in this little bag. It's still small, uh, it still looks pretty identical. The question is how will it perform? But more importantly what came out of that as well as about antenna positioning as well as anything else and when you might use the ceramic tower antenna this sort and when you might use sort of your more traditional T antenna and what would be useful is if we could have all these receivers on one quad at once and fly them one after the other and then reposition them but that would be crazy I mean that would be uh, a really stupid looking quad. Fortunately I do stupid for breakfast and I have indeed installed all that on a quad ready. Let me take you through exactly um, what we're doing with this thing. Okay for this Franco quad what we're looking at here this is a Fury B215 something I think. It's the ones Gearbest used to sell many years ago and it's so old that the VTX only changes channel when you press a button and it was running Beta Flight 322. I've since upgraded that to the latest, which I think is 4211 or 429, something like that. And then I started sticking, um, yeah, receivers in everywhere. This is absolutely not how you should install receivers. This is kind of what I've done to try and allow them to be swappable. So what I've got coming out here, I've got two servo connectors uh, going to the four pins we need on Express LRS. And that is currently linked to this receiver here. So this is our regular antenna one. All the receivers on here uh, are beta FPV ones. I figured to check it with those. So this is your, your sort of very generic uh, regular T antenna, which we expect to give the best signal. And with T antennas, you really have to put those out somewhere. You can, you can have them up vertically. We're putting ours on the leg, which is pretty normal and we expect to get a pretty good signal from this one. Then there's no GPS here, so I won't be going great distances and, and relying on any rescue or anything. Uh, hence, I've put that beeper in just to make sure I can find it again if it goes down. But what I intend to do is fly that as a sort of test to see how it, you know, just get the, the idea. And then I can unplug it and plug one of these two in. Now this one is connected to here. This is one of the little uh, ceramic tower antennas which looks like this let's see if you can focus one of those guys you've probably all seen and they work pretty well generally and I've started off having them in here now this quad's not actually as bad as many normally you would have several sheets of carbon so that signal would get blocked however it's quite noisy there's wires there there's this thing here so hopefully that's gonna react you know like a regular quad and you can just see in there, you can see that little red flash of colour there. That is the latest Beta FPV flat antenna, this guy. And that is connected to here, and then I can unplug that one and connect it all in. But what I will do after I test them like that, is I've got some pre-double-sided uh, sticky here. I can peel that off and stick them to the underneath, because that... Uh, should give a better signal. Well, a better signal one way, not the other. Um, going away, we won't be blocked. Uh, but when we're going, coming back on ourselves, we probably will be. But it'd be interesting to see how they work because I could put them on that side, but then the reverse would be true. Blockage, not blocked. So, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. And I'm going to take more cable ties and stuff just to make sure I keep the wires out of the way and more sticky pads just in case I have to use them. But I figure it's a way where we can at least do a comparison on a quad which is gonna look similar and then show the difference between putting something in there where we've got 
noise and stuff versus on the leg. And at least we can then make a differentiation between what happens if we're mounting sort of inside the quad versus outside the quad. Although, as I said, it's not, it's not as inside as many quads are, but that's the test. Let's go to the flying field and see what happens. Hello friends, I haven't been to the field for well, over a month I think because of like feeling ill and then the weather wasn't good and I was away for a while and then the weather wasn't good again and what a difference it makes. Do you remember when it was just waterlogged and full of like lakes essentially? Now, look at it, it's so overgrown. It's crazy, I have literally had to make myself a crop circle to sit in. Uh, the other weird thing is, last time I was here, the cows were here and I thought I was going to have to go to a different field and now there's no cows, which means either the cows are, have been taken away somewhere randomly or they've moved on to their next stage in life, which is becoming burgers. We're here to test the stupid free receiver quad uh, and see how it does, starting with the, the normal one with the, uh, the regular T antenna. I've also bought the Aquila, which I'm going to start with, just to get sort of a range find, because um, these fields are sort of all in my uh, control. So I can go down there, and if it goes down, not a problem. If I go over there, it's a lot more big crops, and it's harder to find. So I'll check what the range is like there and there. I'm aiming for about like 500 meters to see if I can test it, but if I could go that side where I'm in control, it's much better. But yeah, let's get them up in the air and. Um, We'll try all the different configurations of those free receivers out and see how this new version of the flat receiver copes. While I'm just turning on and getting sat on the Aquila, one thought I just had as well is I'm going to change the packet rate to 500 hertz to get the fastest possible because I think that's what people are like. And also at the moment I'm sitting sideways on and obviously that's not good with these sort of antennas. So I'm going to be facing that way when I'm flying in that direction and I'll turn around and face this way when I'm flying in that direction. So it gives, you know, the, the best possible thing. I don't want to put it right on the sides of the nulls of the antennas because there's, there's not much point in doing that. Anyway, as I said, hopefully we've got sats now so we fly. Okay, so we're off on a bit of a range check and this is just so I could figure out about how far I was going. I suppose I could measure it as well in Google Earth, but this is, uh, well, it's going to give me the same sort of thing. And I wanted to check the route I would go, although I'm going to change this um, during the flights. So first off, I thought, oh, if I go along by these trees, there's kind of a path there. And thus, if it goes down, I'll be able to find it. But that would take me too close to those houses. So I'm going to carry on along here. And I can see the edge of that field is about 400-ish metres. And over here, we get to around 450 and then 500 at the end. But if you look in that corner on the right, that's where I kind of end up going. And that's more around the 400, 430. Although I thought to myself at the time it was about 500. So that's one direction. I would call that the dangerous direction of things. So what I'm going to do is now go the other end. So I've just repositioned myself so I'm facing the right direction. This is kind of a dry run for when I do it for real. And going down this end of the field feels much safer because it's you know it's not overgrown. Uh, the cows have all trimmed this down quite nicely for me. Uh, and I, I thought this was only going to be about 200-ish uh, metres, but it turns out that if we go right to the extents, we get about 300 metres from it, which is pretty good going. And uh, you can just see one of the cows there. When I actually left the field, there was like 20 of them. I don't know where they were. Oh, I think they're all down that by the side of that mud how weird stealth cows anyway so i've got the gist of it the only thing i decide to do is fly this end first so that it's safer and then depending on the results i can go ahead and do the longer one the other thing i make a quick note of is landing in high grass is kind of interesting because there's a landing mat there but i can't really get down and see it i kind of have to just kill the power and think i think i hit it so that's all right okay so we're up and running with the t antenna and i, I I'll cut this down, but I'll just explain um, a few things about what you're seeing. Obviously, you've got the LQ and the DBM RSSI value in the top right. As I said, this is an old quad, so the VTX doesn't speak um, Tramp or Smart Audio, so there's no indication of what power it is or what channel it's on. It was on F1. I've no idea what the power was. I think maybe 200 milliwatts. Um, yeah, and that's about all you need to know. So that's our first turn and let's cut to where we got on the sort of the dangerous route as I call it. 
and as expected the T antenna is holding up pretty well the only problems we get with these is when we do the turn we hit the null point and you can see the link quality drop down the RSSI DBM value looks pretty good though and this one wasn't so bad to land you could just cut through the grass really okay well as expected that first antenna held up pretty well obviously in the turn you could see the link quality drop so now we're going to try the tower antenna which is sort of in the middle of the stack here. It's not quite the same as a regular quad because it's not covered in carbon, but it's kind of the closest I've got. Okay, so flying the safe route first. And one thing I noticed with the benefit of looking back over the DVRs is link quality is always pretty much up there. But if you look at the DBM RSI value, it's, it's okay, but it's not as strong as it was before. So it's kind of, you know, we're stretching the range a little bit on this one. As, as you might expect really because you know the antenna is on the inside rather than the outside. As explained on the intro what I decided to do is change the path I was going to follow. I thought it's you know it's too dodgy going all the way out there if it goes down why don't I try and follow one of these lines that the tractor makes and then if it goes down I know you know it's going to be somewhere within the line or quite close to it and I've got a beeper on board so it'll be okay and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking yep yeah, signals going okay but I get to this point here where the houses are I think actually I'm gonna to have to just move out a little bit so I'm not too close and I'm a little bit concerned about link quality here and when I do the turn this happens um, obviously I'm having a big panic but if you look at the DBM RSSI it actually looks quite reasonable it's just the link quality is horrible well that was slightly terrifying i thought i was gonna i thought was gonna, i knew it was gonna drop when i turned but i didn't know it was gonna drop quite that much Jeez, that was exciting i saw the link quality dropping i thought it's gonna go down a bit more when i when i went but it's like rx loss up on the screen and coming back my link quality was so low but the signal didn't actually drop out despite it saying uh, rx loss um it must have been a micro loss because i still had full control there but that was fairly scary so um yeah, let's see now if we can move that receiver out to the arm and see if that improves it. Although I don't relish the thought of going back through there again, but you know, times this must. We might have a very long walk on our hand. Okay, there he is, just under that leg there, which is, you know, could still be blocked by the battery and stuff, but is it a better place than in the middle there where it's maybe blocked by a lot more? Let's find out. So this flight was interesting because going out this way where I expected a stronger signal, I actually had a weaker one. You can see the link quality flashing away. You can see the DBM value is down, but turning around and coming back where I thought it'd be more blocked is actually a better signal. Now going in the other direction over the field, um, having just sort of gone out away from myself, this seems to be acting much better. The LQ signal here is not too bad, although the DBM value is actually worse than the previous one. But the difference is here, because the LQ is much better, we don't seem to get a fail safe. So it's it's not necessarily a better signal in terms of signal strength, but it seems to be a more consistent one. Well, that one was kind of interesting. Although we had it, I thought, more in the, uh, the open there, going over that field there, well, I guess it was on this side of me, so it was away more that way, as opposed to being on the, the left-hand side of me. Um, it started to get a bit dodgy going over that way, only 300 meters away, but I went that way, I got to about 500 meters, lost telemetry, the signal went quite bad, but it wasn't as bad, uh, certainly wasn't bad as last time I used it. So, yeah, position is everything, it would seem, and you could still be blocked by all sorts of bits. But anyway, let's go on to the flat antenna now. Last time, I barely got 100 meters with this before I got fail safes. So, I, I'm a bit nervous to test in that field, because that's a lot of crops, but uh, this one, but there's one cow there I've discovered but at least I'll be able to recover it so let's definitely go that way first and see how we do we're going to start with the uh, sort of internal config again so it's sat on top of the the flight controller there at the moment to be perfectly honest based on the last time I flew this flat antenna config I wasn't expecting it to get to the end of the field so I was pleasantly surprised when it's doing okay here this is actually better than the tower antenna on the leg um, but not better than the tower antenna on the sort of internal configuration. But yeah, we're all the way out uh, and we've got a reasonable LQ 
and a reasonable DBM value uh, or a bit to 300 meters which is quite reasonable in this sort of thing so I'm pretty nervous doing this run and I'm looking very much at that top right of my screen all the way along I'm figuring it might do the same sort of thing and, and suddenly start dropping especially when I do the turn and here's the there's a kind of a drop there but it's not too bad but I see the RSI DBM value go over 100 or under minus 100 however you want to do it and the LQ quality jumping around I'm still not liking that DBM value in three figures but it eventually recovers and it's got us to around 400 meters well slightly terrifying anytime you get that RX loss on the screen and I was getting telemetry lost from the radio uh, just before we got to the end of that field about halfway down that field so the telemetry coming back uh that dropped off a lot earlier but it got to the end that is uh going on for 500 meters on the end of that field on that little tiny flat antenna um at 500 hertz so that is a huge improvement over what it did before now i'm going to move it to the arm and i would be more confident about this but the last one didn't do as well as i uh, i thought it might so bleh, let's well let's see what happens Okay, so you can see it hopefully just under the arm there. Uh, again, slightly nervous. I'm wondering if it can be good reception that way, but not necessarily that way. I mean, it'd be fine going out, but when I do the turn, ooh, all sorts of blocked. Well, let's find out. <laughs> let's just see what happens. So I'll show you this flight in a bit more detail because A, it was quite short, and B, you see the signal drop off really quite quickly. Um, so as we're going along here, we lose telemetry almost straight away and then we're already in the minus 90 before we've got sort of halfway towards the end of the field the LQ's bobbling about a bit I'm not too worried about that it's that uh, DBM value I'm worried about because as soon as that goes into like minus 100 I'm like that that's pretty high and it shouldn't be that high or that low whichever way you want to put it um, and going over here it's like as bad as minus 107 um, and at this point it's like that's not going to go much further I am not confident about taking that into the next field and no I, I abort the, uh, the the next run now you might have noticed that I didn't go out into those fields at that time the reason being is the signal was so bad there as soon as it gets like past minus 100 dB that is a, a pretty serious situation and uh, on the turn it got pretty hairy there um, I lost telemetry very quickly on that one. Um, really did not like it uh, being there. Now I thought we'd get a pretty good signal going outwards um, because you'd think I've got clear line of sight to it but it just didn't seem to work like that. Uh, so with all these things a positioning is key and having as much line of sight to that as possible or things you can get through but I'm looking forward to getting uh, back in the house, going through the DVR and, and having a bit more of an analysis about what went with what. So uh, let's do that now while I have a quick rip around and get rid of uh, the rest of the batteries I've got. So what conclusions can we draw from flying this strange quad around with its three receivers in, which I've now taken out and it looks a lot tidier. First off, I don't think my general thoughts changed much from the last video I did, which is if you can get a receiver with a T antenna because quite simply you can put it out away from stuff which means it won't get blocked as much and it'll give you the strongest and best signal you can have and quite surprisingly you know you can see these coming up on all sorts this is a little 85 mil quad you can see the T antenna and that has actually got a flight controller with uh, the SPI version of ELRS but you could still have a, a decent signal there so I thought perhaps it was racers that were wanting to sort of reduce things down. So I imagine if you're on Crossfire, albeit this is actually the uh, 868 version of um, Express LRS, it was a converted R9, that could be easily mangled by having a crash into another quad or hitting a gate, and thus you'd want to bring it down. But it still seems quite hard to injure your little T antenna that's sticking out. This uh, I should explain as Tracer, but it's got the same size antenna. But I would guess it was perhaps racers that wanted to put smaller uh, receivers on their sorts of quads. In which case, I think I'd still go for the tower-based antenna over 
uh, the little flat antenna just because again it gives you a bit more but what you need to do is experiment around with the placement because you know it, it might be in a bad position here but moving it back might be better moving it somewhere else might be better still I really do think that's worth having a couple of batteries flying around checking what your range would want to be and seeing how it uh, varied depending where you put it ultimately though I do think the tower and flat antenna belong on little tiny quads that you, you want to squeeze in there like this has got a little tower antenna and it improved the range amazingly over the the old DA SPI that was in there previously uh, that said even the 65 mil quads I've had so far with Express LRS have had the tower antenna rather than the flat one but a flat one as you saw got to about 400 meters um, but you've got to be thinking about what is your material in this it wouldn't have a problem because this is all different types of plastic there's there's no carbon in there there's nothing that's going to block the signal something like this carbon 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 everywhere you're going to have more of a problem uh, and that's why it's worth thinking about what you're going into and what your position is going to be and stuff like that so it's really worth just experimenting and fitting the very best receiver you can do for the job you're doing and unless you are racing and are worried about like hitting into things on a four inch five inch quad I would I would always take a T antenna there's there's no reason I can think of to put something smaller in really anyway that said the improved tower antenna did work so so much better than the original one not as good as this one and none of them were as good as this one which is kind of what you'd expect the the only things that I didn't expect was my changing position making it sometimes worse and sometimes better which is why I say experiment anyway that's my test for the day it only took six weeks to do because of that slight gap in the middle hope that was helpful thanks to Beat FPV for fixing the problem with the flat antenna and supplying me with these receivers you can find links to their products down below and I will catch you in the next video bye for now well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching if you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.